what is COVID-19? Jump question. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, what is COVID-19? I mean, it could be a jam question. It could be a wire question. It could be an A-levels question, IGCSE. And trust me, it's not just limited to biology or life sciences. As an English teacher, yes, I taught English and English literature. And I still teach on my TV show, Africana Literati. I see myself using this as a topic, whether it's the vocabulary or setting an essay question on COVID-19. So... Today, we're going to be looking at Know Your Vocab, Correct Student, Know Your Vocab, COVID-19. My name is Isabella Akinshare, and welcome to Correct Student. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome, and I'm sure you're going to learn a thing or two. Here, our hashtag, our motto, our mantra is always learning. We believe as a correct student, so far as you have breath in you, life in you, you're learning. You could be 99, a few months old, you're always learning. So, we're going to be learning about COVID-19. Like I said, it could very well be a jam question. So today, I'm also going to be wearing my correct teacher hat and I'm going to be going through some terms with you. I hope you find it fun and that way when you're following the news or you're having conversations, you won't go and carry last now as a correct student, you know. So let's get right in. So number one, let's start with COVID-19. Now, it's a mild to severe respiratory disease and the symptoms include coughing, fever, shortness of breath, it can lead to pneumonia, it could lead to death. So it's caused by the coronavirus and you're thinking COVID-19, how did that name come about? So if you take coronavirus and disease, you take the co from corona, the V, VI from virus and the D from disease. So that's COVID-19. Well, it emanated we believe in a meat and live animal market in Wuhan, China in December 2019. So that's where the 19 comes from, COVID-19. So you know what COVID-19 is, right? So I know sometimes you're afraid to cough, you're afraid to have fever. And that's why whenever you're going around on a serious note, they take your temperature and they ask you to look out for symptoms of it. But really, people have recovered. And I have to say a big ups to the Lagos State Government. At the time of this recording, I mean, we've only had, um, we've had one recovery. We've not had any deaths, like I said, at the time of this recording. And the NCDC, DC, that's Nigerian Center for Disease Control, has been doing a great job as well. And Lagosians too have also taken this thing very seriously. So let's move to our second word, and that's virus. So everybody just assumes that you know what a virus is. And I know when you think about a virus, you think about a uh, disease. Yes, viruses are infectious and they cause a lot of pain, problems, havoc in human beings, in animals and in plants. But let's go scientific. So it's any large group of sub microscopic infectious agents that means sub microscopic like you can't see them to the it's not visible to the naked eye and they're usually regarded as non-living but extremely complex molecules that contain a protein coat surrounding an rna or dna see we're getting really scientific here of genetic material but no semi-permeable membrane that are capable of growth and multiplication in living cells so that's the scientific breakdown but how does it affect us on a day-to-day -day? viruses cause harm they cause infections in human beings in plants and animals now let's move to number three and that's infectious so when you say something is infectious obviously you're thinking about an infection and it means it's producing or is capable of producing infection now what's infection think pathogens you know they contain pathogenic agents pathogenic agents are the bad guys they are the ones causing havoc causing 
bad things in your system. That's what you know infections do, and you know there are different infections going around right now. The most popular, you know, is um, COVID nineteen. <laughs> so we've talked about infectious. Now let's look at contagious. When we say something is contagious, what are you thinking? You can catch it, right? It means it's transmissible either directly or indirectly you know through contact with an infected person so an infected person can you know transmit a disease an infection so it makes it contagious and it could be direct or indirect now i'm going to go to a word that you might not have heard in fact it's not that popular and that's why i'm sure you're thinking Sabala, what are you telling us like we know all these words already i bet you don't know this word and this is number five and it is formite so what's formite it's an object it could be a dish it could be a doorknob that may be contaminated with infectious organisms and serve in their transmission. So that's why they say, clean your devices. For young people, we know, even old people who are hooked to our devices, our laptop, you know, take that sanitizer, rub it, disinfect. Disinfect your doorknobs, your devices, you know. So that's when you hear that word for my, just know that it's referring to objects that can play a part in transmitting diseases and infections. Now let's move to number six. And this one, I kind of referred to it earlier on when I was talking about Lagos State. Um, and I said, we you know, we've had one recovery at the time of this recording. And that recovery is of the index patient. In this case, it was an Italian in Nigeria and he's now returned. So what's an index case? It is the first documented case of an infectious disease or generally transmitted condition or mutation in a population, region, or family. It may also, however, refer to an individual who has a disease, a condition, or mutation, and is the first one in the population. So when you think index, you think one. Like this is your index finger, right? Yeah. So now, another term that is related to index patient is patient zero, and that takes me to number seven. What is patient zero? Patient zero is a person identified as the first to become infected with an illness or a disease in an outbreak. So that's your patient zero. Now we're moving swiftly to number eight. You know, we've been talking about the person, people catching it, and we'll be talking about COVID-19, coronavirus disease. And uh, number eight is a super spreader. I don't think I need to speak too much English. Like, just break it down. Super spreader. Meaning, you are spreading, you know, it's not enough. You are now doing it on a higher level. But really, a super spreader is an individual who is highly contagious and capable of transmitting a communicable disease to an unusually large number of uninfected individuals. So that's where you have cases where one person goes into a big gathering and from just being that one person, you now find out that 500 people have it. And you know, this has been how we got to where we are with the spread of coronavirus, um, COVID-19, just because we've had some super spreaders. And that's why a lot of governments, a lot of countries are trying to keep it on the lockdown. So now we'll be moving to number nine, kind of still related to number eight, super spreader, which is now community spread. Again, it's very simple, you know, it's the spread of a contagious disease within a community. And it also has the specific meaning of the spread of a contagious disease to individuals within a geographic location who have no known contact with other infected individuals or have not recently traveled to an area where the disease has any documented cases so now we'll move to number 10 and this one um, a lot of times people don't know the difference number 10 and number 11 so number 10 is epidemic number 11 is pandemic now What's an epidemic? It's an outbreak of a disease that spreads quickly and affects many individuals at the same time. It's just going, it's going, it's going. It's like it's in the air. You're just catching it, catching it, catching it. That's an ep epidemic. Now, pandemic is higher than epidemic. It's an outbreak of a disease that covers a wide geographic area and affects an exceptionally high proportion 
of the population. So it's not just that it's spreading so far and wide, but it's also that it's infecting so many people in a particular geographic location. So that's how you know the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic. And right now, WHO has declared COVID-19 a pandemic, meaning, you know, it's affected a lot of us. A lot of countries have suffered fatalities. Nigeria is no different. At the time of this recording, we've recorded one death. But um, we're really hopeful and positive because that one death, um, had the, the man had um, underlying health conditions. So the coronavirus disease was almost like just the finisher when you look at it because when your body's already fighting so many different things and then something comes in like that then your immune system is really tasked um, so let's move to number 12 and this has to do with you know when you're trying to treat corona disease covid19 what do you do one of the things that we do is contact tracing but what does that mean is the practice of identifying and monitoring individuals who may have had contact with an infectious person as a means of controlling the spread. So contact tracing is basically tracing the contacts of different people, people that have come in contact with someone who has COVID-19. And, you know, that's what um, the government have been trying to do. They've been trying to trace people just to contain the spread. You know, the fewer people that you have contact with, the higher the chances of it's reducing from a pandemic to an epidemic and forever going away, like that's our prayer. So now number 13, still on recovery is and things to do is self-quarantine. And that's what you know as self-isolation, self-quarantine, yeah. taking yourself apart. This could be for two weeks. It's almost like lock up, like you're in your house, you're in your area you it's a quarantine area like you don't come that's where social distancing comes you don't come close and when you do self-isolation or self-quarantine let's say you have symptoms of the virus you know you actually have to keep away even from family members and once you start displaying those kind of symptoms get in touch with the relevant authorities in nigeria there's a toll free number in lagos there's a toll free number you get in touch with them they can organize picking you up and having you tested. And then talking about number 14, again, tested. So when you do a test, usually if I say your mark is negative, you're like, no, red by roll, like negative is minus. And if I say your mark is positive, is blue by roll, black by roll is positive. But in this case, when you're testing for an infection, e.g. COVID-19, if you test positive, that's bad. That means you have the infection. Now, if you test negative, it means that you don't have it. So you see, sometimes this English language can play tricks on us. So you want a negative result, not a positive result when it comes to testing. And then finally, number 15 is a new word that I learned, zoonotic. And that describes a disease that can be transmitted from animals to humans. So animals to humans it's zoonotic i hope you've learned a thing or two um big kudos to you if you knew all 15 words all 15 terms phrases well done like correct student know your vocab covid 19 super brain but i know i learned a lot even putting this together and it's always fun being in the classroom and you know covid 19 has taught us that you don't need a board you don't need a marker you can turn your mobile phone you can turn your internet screen you can turn your device into uh, a classroom of sorts and still communicate still teach still educate so here on correct students is all about always learning we want to learn from you and that's why i want you to drop a comment or two in the comment section let me know um, some terms that you feel like okay maybe if i decide to do a second video on this maybe some terms that are, uh, I need to put out there some terms you need clarification for and we'll see and also let me have ideas I know we've been putting out a lot of COVID-19 content and that's the responsible thing to do but beyond COVID-19 I'm sure there are things you'd like for us to discuss here to share on this channel and if you're not already following us on social media please do that correct student one on Twitter correct student on Facebook and Instagram please like us tweet at us share repost um, hashtag 
hashtag correct student hashtag always learning and of course subscribe to the channel and tap the bell so you can get notifications and if you've enjoyed this video thumbs up to give it a like and tell somebody share the link so that's where we end things on know your vocab correct student know your vocab covid 19 and i bet you learned a thing or two i know i certainly have i'm isabella akinshare thank you so much for tuning in bye bye